Well, hello and welcome back to the Rest of Saga Workshop YouTube channel. And this week we are back here at the lathe, but not specifically the Myford ML7 lathe from 1952 that I'm really, really proud of. But most specifically, I'm looking at these two tools, the micrometer gauge and a depth gauge. And I'm going to teach you very quickly how to use them as they're super important. And I've had to learn for myself as I can learn this completely new hobby of model engineering. So bear with me and we'll work our way through this and hopefully it'll be a bit clearer very soon. Okay, so when I bought the lathe, I thought I'm going to have to be able to measure stuff. And what better to measure than with a micrometer and a depth gauge? Now, depth gauge is also obviously, sorry, for measuring the depth of a hole um, or a cavity or a recess or whatever you want to do. And we'll talk about this as well as this, which is the micrometer. Now, these are both mirror and right instruments. That is the most specifically the mirror and right box for the micrometer. Um, why mirror and right? Well, they're quite reasonably priced second hand. They're old and British, which is what I like. Obviously, Myford ML7, Land Rover. I like old British things made of metal, which is pretty much what it boils down to. But they're reasonably priced and they're nice and accurate. And I like reusing old stuff rather than continuously buying new stuff. And have you seen the price of one of the new Japanese Matutoyo or whatever it is they're called micrometers? No, thanks. And you get yourself a vernier caliper, but these will do in the meantime to get started. So, without any further waffle, let's have a look at the micrometer. So, first thing first, over here you have a locking tab. When it's over there, it is unlocked. And when over it is here, it is locked. Um, you put your piece of material in this gap here, and that can be adjusted out with these. So that's like a finer adjustment with a ratchet, and that is a larger... I suppose they both adjust at the same rate, but we'll talk about why they're there in a little second. Going to open it out here and take it over to a piece of work and show you what I mean. Okay, now that I've got the camera set up on its tripod, we'll unlock a micrometer. Um, so I'm going to open this out here nice and quick. And you can see on the main shaft of the micrometer here, I will point out that this is obviously an Imperial, not to one inch. I don't normally work in Imperial, but I'm going to have to learn if I'm going to learn how to do model engineering. So, first of all, along this shaft here, you have divisions that will go all the way up to seven, eight. I can feel me losing viewers as I unscrew this all the way up to zero. So there are 10 divisions, each subdivided into four divisions, and these are zero to ten or zero to nine whatever you want to think of and these are tenths of an inch so those are not point one of an inch and then every subdivision in between is point zero so every division in between is obviously a fraction of that zero point one so if i have moved down to halfway between the nine and the ten mark here that will be zero point nine five whenever this zero comes around to there. So that is currently at 0 0.95 of an inch. And along here, this is divided into 20 fifths. And I'll come to that. Sorry for the jump cut there. Over here, mark from zero all the way around to 25 on this the thimble. And these are divisions of 0 0.001. So these are thousandths of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate that now on a feeler gauge, and the feeler gauge is going to be 0 0.04. Okay, so this is me measuring the 0 0.04 feeler gauge, and I'm just going to screw this in lightly here with the little ratcheted wheel, and stop whenever it ratchets. Let's lift the camera down and take a more detailed look at that, and we'll have a go at reading it. So let's have a go at reading this. So here on the main shaft of the micrometer, there is 0 0.025, and then on the thimble, there are 15 thousandths. Therefore, it is zero, add the two together. So 0 0.025 plus, <coughs> YouTube reality, 0 0.015 equals 0 0.04 which is exactly what it shows there attached to all that support. So that's one millimetre. So that 
is the micrometer. I've made that a bit of a whistle stop tour because I want to keep this video fairly short. You can also get micrometers with um, tents. I think I'm right in saying that. So that is the further division beyond thousands, which is obviously ten thousandths. Um, and those are little horizontal lines that lie just above there. This micrometer doesn't do it. I'm not going to be machining down to tenths. Um, I'm really not that smart and I'm pretty new to this hobby. So I um, will be perfectly happy if I can get things within a one thousandth, as is indicated here, of an inch. So there you go. That's a micrometer in a nutshell. Also here I have a depth gauge, which pretty much works on the same principle. Don't see a lot of these used on uh, machining YouTube. Um, interestingly, the counter works backwards, because obviously the needle comes down and out, and this one doesn't have a little ratchet on the end, which would be nice, because I'm pretty sure if you screwed that in hard enough, you would blunt the end of the needle, which is the depth gauge. But the same principle, the big numbers are 0 0.01, so tenth of an inch, in between those are 0.025 increments and then these are the thousands because this goes all the way up to 25 again so currently that is sitting at 0.3 of an inch but if i move it around here that'll be 0 0.275 plus 24 thousandths and that will give you the depth of that pin so there you go this video has not gone into calibrating these tools. It's really important that they're calibrated correctly. As you noticed on the feeder gauge, I didn't, I haven't got two of these to compare. Maybe this is ever so slightly out or maybe the feeder gauge is slightly out. I suspect it's more the feeder gauge, um, but it's just less than a thousandth of an inch out. Again, I'm not getting into that. Those are automotive feeder gauges. I doubt they're precision ground to ten thousandths of an inch. But I'm just happy to be able to share this knowledge with you as I've learned it and we just have to get good at mental arithmetic and adding up your decimal places while you are operating a piece of heavy machinery that might want to rip your fingers off. So that's a challenge in and of itself to keep yourself clear of the moving targets. So thanks very much for watching this video here on the Rest of Saga YouTube channel. You can catch me every week. I make a video here and a short and I try and mix it up a bit. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. So I mix the content up across those channels. So find me there. Give me a like, a follow, a subscribe or whatever. I reply to all my comments everywhere and I really appreciate your support. I'll catch you again next week, but until then, cheerio.